Oh. My. Rio. Hey, Techie 101 here, here to review Bleach chapter number 569, entitled, The White Haze. What is the White Haze? Ah, oh, fuck it, we already know what's going on. It's Rukia's Bankai! This is the chapter where we finally get to see Rukia's Bankai, and I got some stuff to say about it, so let's just get going. Alright, so, chapter starts off with Byaki Akuchki's epic arrival, shattering Asnot's fear barrier territory zone thing he kind of set up there. And we have Rukia, who, for all intents and purposes, last chapter was basically about to, like, collapse on the ground in the fetal position, sucking her thumb, is now looking pretty much okay and composed now that Byaki is here. I mean, a little bit of traumatizing whiplash for Rukia, I'm sure. But hey, a leather, you know, Kubo does that sometimes with the chapters. Like last chapter, like with, um, oh, there was another thing that really was jarring with, uh, the way Kang Du got defeated by Toshiro. You know, in that one scene when, uh, Kang Du at the end of chapter 552, you know, when the Bonkai began to poison him, he's just like, oh shit! And the next chapter, he's just like, hmm, that was mildly irritating to me. You know, a little bit of jarring there, but hey, I don't know. Maybe, maybe Byakuya just has that effect on Rukia. You know, Rukia's sitting there about to piss her pants from, you know, sheer abject terror. She's like, oh my god, all my worst fears come to fruition. Oh, hey, Nissan, what's going on? How you doing, man? I don't know. Anyway, Asna is basically thrilled by this, because this is what he wanted from the beginning, is a chance to fight against Byakuya and steal his Bankai once again, so he, you know, cracks his creepy-ass smile there. And, you know, some people have been telling me that, you know, Asnot's uh, Volt standing looks a lot like Ukiyor's uh, Resurrection Segunde Tapa, uh, and Ichigo's, you know, hollow form when he fought against Ukiyor, like, melded together. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, the eyes look, like, straightly ripped right from Ukiyor's uh, Segunde Tapa form, and the, and the teeth, you know, barring and showing is exactly like a hollow mask. You know, I, I'm not going to say Kubo exactly took those two things as uh, a basis for Asnot's power, but I can't really, I, I can't really see Kubo drawing Asnot in his Volt standing and not thinking about Ukiora or Ichigo's hollow form. I, probably very difficult for him, and he's just like, ah, I'm sure no one will notice. Sure, why not? He, he looks pretty creepy and original on his own, so it's not really, like, he adds some more stuff to it, so it's not like it's a blatant ripoff, but there's some similarities certainly there. Oh, uh, Asnots goes on to explain all the horrible things he did to Byakuya last time and the reason he's, you know, surprised he's even standing up. He's just like, I eviscerated your entire stomach. You must have had difficulty keeping food down. Okay, he eviscerated his, as in he ripped his entire stomach out, as in Byakuya Kuchki is now absent one stomach, which, let me check, by the time... Yeah, we only have one of those. Pretty sure. We, do we only have one of those? Pretty sure. Um, you know, I'm not. I'm not gonna do it. You know, I've I've complained enough about the free. Like last chapter, I complained about the cells and the neurons. Chapter before that, I was bitching about absolute zero. I'm I'm tired, honestly, guys. You know, trying to bring logic into this because all it does is start a massive comment war about you know the section of people saying that it's nothing but fiction. Therefore, Kubo can make up his own rules. Therefore, you not you don't even have to worry about it. You're just thinking into it too much. And then we have another side people that were like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, you're right, Absolute Zero should have killed him, but here's why I think that doesn't matter, and they're trying to rationalize it, and it's just a massive vicious circle that doesn't go anywhere, so I'm just going to stop right there. Although, I will say from a storytelling perspective, this might be going a little bit overboard, simply on the fact that it's, 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 it's more of just like, uh, like how, okay, good way for me to put this. Okay, uh, Star Wars, all right. Uh, if, if the original trilogy of Star Wars, okay, the uh, scene in Empire, you know, where Luke Skywalker and uh, Darth Vader are fighting below Bespin, you know, and, you know, they're on that catwalk thing, and then Vader freaking slices off his own son's hand, and then, you know, you know, Luke has to go through getting that mechanical hand. Okay, imagine you saw none of that. It happened. Oh, sure, you know, Luke still lost the hand, and Vader was, uh, sure enough, the one that cut it off. But we don't see any of that. Like, we see them fighting on the catwalk, just like, okay, I'm your father, and then, you know, they come and pick him up, and then that's all there is to it. We don't find out about that until at the very end of the next movie, at the end of Jedi, where, you know, Luke, uh, you know, like, uh, Vader defeats the Emperor, and then he takes off. Sorry for anyone who hasn't seen Star Wars, by the way. You should really. Should, there's no excuse why you shouldn't. And then, you know, Vader tooks it off and he's just like, he's like, Luke, 
sorry about that hand I cut you off. And then it looks, and it, like Luke finally takes it off. He's like, oh yeah. And this is the first time the audience is seeing that. Like Luke lost a hand. Like we were unaware of it completely. Kind of the same thing here. Asnot's fight against Biakia was pretty close. I think it actually was over a year ago, really. And, uh, you know, we, we were, uh, you know, we, we didn't really know the full extensive damage. I mean, we knew he got fucked up. We knew he got, like, drilled into a wall repeatedly with Senbon Zakura Kageyoshi, but we didn't know the full extent of his damage, you know? Um, and we're just finding out about this now. Like, oh, by the way, I removed your entire stomach. Like, maybe you could say uh, Karinji's healing pond, you know, healed it, but if his, if his stomach was completely gone, it's not really a matter of healing. It's like the same thing with eyes and when he was talking about Orihime's power, you know, like, uh, you know, you healed uh, Grim Zhao's arm, it's no longer healing, it's more of just like, uh, you know, reversing the flow of time, so maybe Byakuya still doesn't have a stomach, maybe he gained that super Riatsu, though, that made it, so maybe that doesn't matter anymore, I'm not really sure, Be uh, Raznot does say he looks a little bit more thinner because of that, not sure what's going on, Byakuya was always a bean pole anyway, so I'm, I'm sure we're not going to see a massive difference here, um, but yeah, that's just really what it is, I think it might be just like a last ditch effort to see on Kuba, on uh, Kubo's part, just trying to, you know, patch together this whole mess uh, with uh, Asnot versus Byakuya, because he really was going to die. Like, this was confirmed by Kubo. He was supposed to fucking die. And then he got, oh, so much fan backlash. You know, I can't kill him off because there'd be so much fan backlash, they would drop the series. And, you know, you know, Byakuya has his entire army of fangirls behind him, so Kubo decided to end it. This might be just, like, a last ditch effort trying to scrap it together. Like, oh, he was gonna die. Asnot did fuck him up. I just want to, to explain that. He did lose a stomach, but first time we're seeing about this from, I'm not going to argue the semantics, but storytelling perspective, not a really, you know, not a solid concrete thing to do here. It's kind of jarring, but regardless of all of that, Rukia now looks over to them, and I, I don't know if this is the first time Rukia is hearing about this stomach business either, but Rukia is looking over at Biaki and be like, oh shit, this is what Asnot wanted from the beginning, was to, a, a chance to fight Biakia. That's the whole reason he came and fought me specifically, was to lure Biakia out. So, uh, you know, you know, she tries to warn him, I guess, about, you know, don't look in the eyes of any of the, like, the barrier, because even though, I guess, Biakia shattered the part that was immediately behind him, that was the kind of whole point of Asnot's Volt standing, how he creates this area that completely surrounds the, the foe with eyes. It doesn't matter what direction you look in. So, so you know, she's just like, Nisama, look out, don't look at the eyes. Asnot's like, too late. And he says, too late, in a really cool fashion, which really does make him look like Hollow Ichigo. Really, damn it, Kubo. Um, but anyway, so uh, this next page is fucking confusing. I really can't make heads or tails of it. Well, that's not true. I can make heads or tails of it, but I have like three different possibilities of what could be going on here. So in the next page, we get this, which at the very bottom, we see just a mounding cluster of Asnot's eyes all bubbling together, and then above that, we see, like, a bunch of the eyes that are being, they look like pillars. Now, I don't know if it's, like, Senbon Zakura is forming these, like, spears that are, or, like, like, like spearhead-type deals that are just stabbing the eyes, or in, in some regard, it looks like the, 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 the pillars are part of the eyes themselves, like the eyes are taking that shape. Um, it's probably the former, it's probably the, you know, Zenbon Zakura is being shaped in this form in order to stab the eyes, uh, to eliminate them because they're bleeding. I'm just saying the white on white, the lack of shading really makes it kind of look like they're the same shape. I mean, even if you, you might be saying right now, like, Tekking, it's obviously Zenbon Zakura. I'm like, okay, yeah, it's fine. But you have to look at this page, you, you have to understand my confusion how it looks like they're the same damn item. You Okay, you can't. You have, to, you have to give me that much. Okay, I know it's manga, black and white, limited coloring, but a little bit of shading could have solved this issue. Anyway. So Byakuya cuts all that down, and he's just like, that's funny that you said you were too late, because I would have said the same thing about you. Asnot just immediately jumps to the conclusion, like, oh, this is his Bankai, obviously, right? Because he's, he, you know, he's manipulating Zenbon Zakura in this fashion, and he's using it so, uh, you know, directly at his eyes, must be his Bankai. And he's like, uh, Byakuya's just like, ah, uh, yeah, Bankai, um... Yeah, bro, you you had my Bankai for a long time. Did, you should know that my Bankai is when the entire sword disappears. That includes blade, hilt, and guard all gone, and I can manipulate the swords completely with my hands or, you know, remotely if I so choose. Uh, and I, you can clearly see that I still have the hilt and the handle right here. This is my normal, everyday Shikai. Senbon Zakura, nothing more, nothing less. However, he goes on to explain that uh, even though it is just his Shikai, he basically learned how to remaster it, or he learned to see it from a different perspective uh, after Asnot stole it. He basically just took a step back and he says that it's basically like I'd understand the larger picture of what I had here. This the full potential of this power that I have before me. And if you this really came to realize like it, it's honestly a lot like Toshiro's uh, uh, sword. Whereas Toshiro's 
Bankai is really nothing more than his Shikai on steroids, or his, the next stage of his Shikai. Byakuya's is in the same way. Byakuya's Shikai, 1,000 uh, flower petals that are razor sharp blades. His Shikai, I mean his Bankai, a little bit of debate on this in the fandom, exactly how many blades he has. Sometimes he says he has infinite. When he fought against Zomori, I think he said he had hundreds of millions. Certainly, like, certainly an insane multiple of 1,000. But... Regardless of the number, the ability and the potential of the blades is still the same, just in a smaller quantity. For example, I mean, in, in theory, couldn't he use Senkei while in Shikai? Couldn't he use Hakutaken while in Shikai, just in a much more smaller scale? Same thing how uh, Toshiro can use his Senyan Hyoro ability in Shikai, it's just a lot more fucking dangerous. Um, except with that, that's like dealing with the whole weather. This is just flower petal razor blades. This should be a lot more easier to, com to manipulate, just on a much more weaker scale. Um... So that would explain why, you know, he, he manipulated his flower petals in, like, those spearhead-looking things and those spikes, I guess you could say. Uh, he's never really done that while in Shikai. I mean, we haven't seen his normal Shikai in a very long time, not really since the, uh, the Soul Society arc. Ever since then, he's just kind of usually jumped to Bonkai right away. He jumped to Bonkai right away against Somari. He jumped to Bonkai against Yami. Uh, you know, again, after that, we didn't really see much of it, but he even jumped to Bonkai kind of right away against Tsukushima, uh, which was really kind of overkill in that situation, but then again, he was fucking Tsukushima. But, yeah, so so, um, you know, I, I think that's just what award that Byakuya did. He just kind of had to step back when he was relearning his Zonpakuto uh, against, I guess he learned it with Nimaya. I guess Nimaya reforged his sword, but it still had the Senbo and Zakura name, so at least his sword was honest to him, if nothing else. And he kind of looked back, and I can imagine Nimaya just like, Dude, you man, you got this awesome sword. You can make spikes and you can make like arrows and shit. You don't have to be limited to just like them flying around like a beautiful little scenery on a summer's night. You could go awesome tubular gnarly with this, man. Biaki would just be like, I do believe you have a point there, good sir. And then he walked off to the next palace. Um, but yeah, anyway, he thanks Asnot for helping him understand this new ability. Asnot takes it pretty well. Bro. Um, as you okay, bro? You you look like your uh, your heart's about to jump out of his chest. Okay, God, no, uh, ah, this guy's disgusting. And so as not unstitches his chest vagina, and from it, an entire swimming pool's worth of the fear goo emerges. And this, I mean, this is more what I was talking about earlier on. Like, you know how last chapter I was complaining how his volt standing, you know, I mean, the face was a little bit creepy, but at the end of the day, his, you know, his overall appearance didn't really look much. Well, yeah, now he goes into a little bit more what I was talking about here. He goes on the monologue number 15 about how, you know, death is too easy, 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 death is too easy. Eight, nine, nine, ten times. Ten times you say that. Okay. And this sends us into another cavalcade of what the fuck am I looking at, where we have the eyes forming at the bottom of him, and then the lower half of Asnot's body contorting into like a massive collection of eyeballs and the goo, and then his entire body is like, it looks like his entire body is like literally like exploding with the amount of goo that's like, like, uh, that, that's being, uh, emerging from him. Um... And he's just, you know, I'm going to send you into oblivion, you know, typical ass not shit. Um... You know, he should really, we should really have a book of the finest quotes by Asnot, Sturmritter F, in all eternity. I, I think he could really make that work. Ah, uh, yes, class. All right, so uh, turn to page number 163 into your uh, quotes from the Sturmritters, volume two. Now, uh, yes, uh, James, could you please stand up and uh, say for me uh, the amazing uh, time-tested quote that is uh, on line 7. Now, class, I want you to be taking notes here, and I really want you to pay attention to the symbolism and the drive that uh, Mr. Asnot, Sternritter F, brings to the table here, because this is this is really a changing point uh, on our, our itinerary, and it is going to be in the next exam, so I, I, I stress that you pay attention for the essay portion. All right, James, if you would. Death is too easy. 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 Oh. That was beautiful, James. Uh, excellent performance. Now, class, uh, what, what do you believe Mr. Knott was uh, referring to in, in, in that uh, soliloquy? Yes, Lisa. Um, that death is too easy? Okay, fuck it. You know, you, you got nothing. You do not understand this class at all. Get the fuck out of here. So we come to the high point of the... Okay, maybe not that far. We come to the second high point on the chapter, where, uh, whereas, you know, Asnot's in the middle of his temper tantrum fear evolution, whatever, like, he's going through fear puberty or whatever in front of them. Uh, Byaki and Ruki are just kind of watching this, and Byaki just kind of turns to Ruki and just being like, you know, Ruki, I was, I was on the way here, and, uh, felt your riatsu, and, um... Uh, 
it was pretty good. It's pretty good. It was, you got stronger. That's that's good for you. So be, Ryukia basically, you know, breaks down, you know, crying, and you can, it's kind of sad in some sense, but she remembers all the moments back in her life. And you remember Byakuya, after adopting Ryukia into the Kushiki clan, did not talk to her, or she he barely looked at her for like 40 years, you know, Earth time. And you can really see the expression on her face here of just how happy she is that Byakuya finally acknowledges her strength and how powerful she's gotten, and they, they can kind of stand as equals. But at the same time, Dude was kind of a sucky ass brother, so this is really kind of sad here that you know she this me means that much to her just that he says you know you you did good for once you know that's that's such a rarity in her life that yeah it kind of got me kind of got me crying too but for the for the wrong ways you know I wasn't I'm happy for Rukia I really am Chica needs some recognition but uh, yeah Biakia man you maybe should have brought her to an amusement park sometimes you know it's something you know I'm just saying. All right, Ekia has his, uh, you know, motivational speech, I should say, where he says, fear, I you're always going to have fear. And it doesn't matter, any anxiety that you have in your body, even the smallest amount, it's, it's going to blossom into fear at some point anyway. You just kind of have to live with it. But then he immediately switches over to, we have absolutely nothing to fear. You know, I've read this chapter multiple times in this section. I've tried to figure this out. In one section, I, I've looked at other translations too. In one section, he just says, the slightest bit of uneasiness or panic can burgeon or, or, or can bellow into fear, can turn into fear. And the next scene, he's just like, we have absolutely nothing to fear. Okay, you just, unless you're trying to be like, it's not fear, it's anxiety, or fear is just a part of life, therefore we have nothing to fear, unless you're going philosophical, Descartes on it, um... You know, I, I, I'm not sure what you're trying to go with here, Biakia, but one panel, this is what fear is. Next panel, we have nothing to fear. And honestly, I'm kind of burned out on this whole thing. You know, we've talked about, you know, we've heard Az and Rukia and Biakia talk about what fear is, how can we avoid it, what it really is in the body, how it's like the primal drive. We've heard so many characters talk about this. We've heard it so many times. I'm honestly burned out. Fear is fucking fear, all right? I don't know. That, that's what it is, all right? So, Rukia, regardless, you know, she strengthens her resolve, and she seems completely fine now, and she says, of course, I, I don't I don't feel fear anymore. And then we cut back to Asnod, who is, you know, face is like, I'm melting! His face is melting off. His eyeballs are, you know, pulsating from his socket. Okay, this is what the bold standing should look like. This is what we should have saw last chapter. But I guess shock value develops, and he states, the end is nigh, Kuchki Biakia. However, Biakia simply turns to him, he's like, yeah, no, bro, it's cool. I'm gonna let my little sister hand her this. I think she's, I think she's got it. She's got this one. Asnot looks over and he's just like, is this a fuck? Is this a joke? Are you serious? Like, like that, like she, she could barely defeat me with her strongest technique earlier. I immobilized her with fear. She would have passed out if it wasn't for you showing up. And you're, you're really thinking that her, this little girl, is gonna take on this massive melting pot of just horrificness, this, uh, you know, American horror story incarnate on her own. Biakia's like, sure, hells yeah. And, uh, okay, so Rukia, and if you don't know by now, because I'm sure the fandom exploded with this on all the social media sites, Bonkai Haka no Togame, White Miss Sentence. And this summons, like, a massive, like, we don't really know what it is. It looks like an atom bomb of white haze basically exploded forth from the middle of the Vonente, which is probably an apt definition of what it is with, a, like, a pillar erupting at the center with, like, a little platform kind of resembling her Tsukishiro, the, the white pillar she does, except a little bit more elaborate and with the haze. And that's the end of the chapter right there. Rokia did bunka, bitch! Whoa, yeah! I'm happy for it, you know? I'm happy. I'm happy. I still, I, I, I got something to say, and it's a minor nitpick, and you could yell at me for it, because, you know, it, it, this is a time for rejoicing in the fandom, you know, because this has been such a hot-button issue for, like, the past couple of, uh, uh, months, really, ever since Rukia was training at the Soul Palace. Like, she gonna get Bonkai? She gonna get Bonkai? And once again, we have two sides of the argument. One side of the argument, well, you know, Rukia, you know, she's still only a lieutenant, and she's never really been a, a front-type fighter, you know, so I really don't see she's gonna get a Bonkai. I don't think she really needs it. And the other side is just, of course, of course she needs Bonkai's fucking main character! Wow! And, uh, yeah, in this case, the, uh, the, the, those people won. I'm just as surprised as you are. And you know, some people are probably gonna bring up the fact that originally I said, you know, I don't think Rukia's gonna get a Bonkai. And you're right, I didn't. Um, but, but more so than just Rukia specifically, I was talking about 
a lot of the other uh, lieutenants as a whole. Whereas, I, I, like, I, I don't think Kubo is going to reveal every Bonkai that we need to know by the end of the series. I just don't think that's going to happen, you know? Uh, which is why I hate that goddamn rule. I hate that rule that the fandoms invented that if a captain uses his Bonkai, then that means he's going to die. You know, I hate that. You know, I, 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 I criticized Kubo. You know, I, I suicide, homicide, bricked him last chapter. Um, and I'm still pissed off by that. But I have to give Kubo a little bit more credit that he's not just sitting at his, uh, his, his table just thinking about okay who's uh you know ooh, i'm gonna kill off uh I'm, I'm gonna kill off uh shinji next oh wait shit that means i have to show off his bonkai crap you know i don't think he's sitting there doing that aside from that fact rose just showed off his bonkai he's probably gonna live same thing with kensei we finally found out what his don bonkai did and he's still gonna live probably uh but that that's just uh, that's just that, that's just a little uh pet peeve i have the thing that i was bringing up here was that I don't think Kubo's going to reveal every Bonkai by the end of the series, uh, that, like every name sore. Like we might not get to see Rangiku's Bonkai or Yumechika's or, you know, the ones that we, you know, like just because we know the name of their sword. Um, but, you know, Rookie does know Bonkai and I'm, you know, happy for it. It's the way Kubo decided to go with it and I respect that decision. I'm a little bit upset of the way it was executed. Not the, not the fact that she used it, then, you know, I, I can understand, all right? She trained in the Soul Palace, you know, I can completely understand how she was able to achieve Bonkai. Uh, it's just the way that she, um, released it and that time in the battle because one way or the other her bonkai is going to be the coup de gras for asnoth this is gonna put the coffin i mean this is gonna put the nail in the coffin and this is gonna finish this guy off okay and even if it doesn't even if next chapter she uses whatever attack her bonkai manifests which i have no idea and asnoth's still alive Biaki is just going to deliver the killing blow, so it doesn't really matter. So the next time we see Asnot, Ruki, and Biaki, I'm not I'm not sure if it's going to be the really next chapter, but the next time we see them, Asnot's going down, and that's the problem. Revealing a Bonkai as the finishing blow. If you look back at all the other Bonkais that were used by the Shinigami, they've always been in a time of desperation, in a time in the middle of a fight or at the very beginning of a fight when they knew they had no other option. Now, sure, some captains, especially Toshiro, after using their Bonkai, the the first time they are basically like, like more bonkai happy than anybody else you know toshiro will like go bonkai 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 at the beginning of every single fight um but the first time he used it down in the uh the, the that uh, the area in the central 46 living area against aizen you know aizen just stabbed momo he just revealed himself as the main villain you know that was a pretty damn desperate time for you know toshiro just to kill this bastard i'm going full throttle if you look at all the other captains they did it in the same way uh soy phone you know bargain basically couldn't be defeated by anything else so she had to whip out her bonkai um, even Biakia against Renji, you know, Biakia had to release his Bankai because his Shikai was useless. Renji used his Bankai against Biakia, defying pretty much the entire laws of the Seirete, as well as his own captain to, de to defeat him in order to save uh, Rukia. Uh, Mayuri used it against Uryu when Uryu used Let's Steal, and if, you know, I, I you know, Koma too, when against, uh, you know, after Tozen got defeated. So, look at all the different fights, even with the Visors with Kensei after Mashiro got defeated. They're all in very times of desperation. This time it's a much more relaxed much more easing into it reveal and um you know I, I i can understand it maybe why she didn't use it earlier against asnot maybe she doesn't have, like she even stated she doesn't have a complete understanding of all of her powers she doesn't know uh where the limit is it's a very intricate ability maybe whatever her bonkai does she just couldn't you know use it right away going back to the star wars references again um the, the way Luke can manipulate the Force. Uh, you know, in New Hope, he learns, like, the very bare basics of he's, like, gaining the footholds on how to use it. In Empire, he could use it a little bit more proficiently, but he can only move, like, small objects across the room. All right, so Luke fights against Darth Vader. What are you going to do? Are you going to use, you know, the lightsaber, which is a much more efficient tool and you're much more used to handling, or, or are you going to use this massive power that could potentially defeat Vader, but he knows a lot more about it than you do, and you don't really know that much about it. I think I'm gonna stick. I think you better stick with the lightsaber until uh, you know the next uh, next movie. There, Luke. Same thing with Rukia. You know, she maybe could have used Bonkai against Asnot, but she's a lot more adept at using Shikai, and she's not gonna go to the big guns right away if she thinks there's any potential that the Shikai would do more damage to Asnot. So that if, you, if you're gonna complain about that, why she didn't use it earlier, that's the best idea I can have. Or you know, maybe she was gonna use the Bonkai, but the fear power took over too quickly, and she she just never had a chance to doing it. Um, that's that's my thoughts on it. As for the power itself i know have i have no idea you know i can't you know 
Bonkai, you know, White Mist sentence that's probably going to have something to do with White Mist. Um, maybe she'll be able to freeze anything on contact with this mist, or she basically opens up her own territory or, you know, zone, like her ice zone or whatever, or temperature zone. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, that, that's all I've got, you know, like white mist, and then it summons like this shroud of white mist, you know, that's, that's all I got. Uh, but anyway, this review has been going on for a very long time, uh, but I'm glad that you stuck with me the entire time. Kubo, you know, great job. We got to congratulate Rukia. We got to give it to her. She finally got it. She got Bonkai. Let's all eat cake. Um, you know, let, let's celebrate, you know? It's, it's this kind of shit doesn't happen very much, you know? Um, you know, like, like something we've been looking forward to ever since really um, the Bonkai was revealed back in the Soul Society arc by Yoroichi. You know, we've been thinking like, who's this, who's this, who's this? You know, it's been in the fandom for a while, what it's going to look like. Um, and it finally happens. So, yeah. He's got a. I'll do the fangirl squee that you guys probably all are feeling on the inside. Just, just so if you're sitting next to somebody, you don't want to be embarrassed. Like if you're reading this in public right now, if you're at school or at work, you don't want to be. You know, you don't want people to look around and be like, "The fuck are you watching?" You know, oh, Japanese comics. Okay, well, get back to work there, uh, Bill. You know, I'll, I'll do it for you internally. Rookie is Bonkai. Yeah. <sighs> okay. See you, everybody.